the Franco takes. <laughs> All right, welcome to the recording. Um, and uh, this is, we're looking at how to improve your PBIS program. Um, we are from Classcraft. Uh, my name is Andrew Hutchison, and uh, I taught for 16 years, and I used Classcraft with my students for four of those years. And my partner in crime here is Franco. Franco, I'll let you introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, um, yeah so my name is Franco. Um, I'm the solutions advisor for Classcraft. Um, so I work with like schools and districts in, uh, in New Mexico to kind of partner with Classcraft to bring it to your school. Oh, yeah. He does the numbers, which I do not do. <laughs> <laughs> um, April, do you want to say anything? April's just, April's just here for the beauty factor so all right so let's uh let's jump into it and <laughs> it's just like that nah. so uh franco can you see my screen am i sharing correctly good yes i love sharing correctly so then we're looking at let's start with um and we also have joining us here nancy so if you hear me saying nancy put something in the chat nancy this and that that's why i'm saying that nancy Put this in the chat. Um, give me a rating one, two, or three. This is a self assessment on your current comfort level with the acronym PBIS. Three, you're a pro, two, you kind of know, and one, you're like, whoa, don't call on me to tell you what PBIS stands for. So, three, you're a pro, two, you kind of know, one, you're like, whoa. All right. So Franco, thank you, Franco. Franco's a two. All right. April's a two. Okay. All right. I suspect you are underrating yourselves. All right, so we're all twos here. Okay, great. So then, so then, what does as a two, April, Franco, Nancy, anyone, you should be able to tell me what the acronym PBIS stands for, possibly? And why don't you go ahead and, and shout that out for us? What is what does that stand for? Positive behavior intervention sport. Oh wow, Nancy's. Bam, Nancy definitely is going quick with the typing fingers. Yes, Nancy, perfect. Okay, so let's take, let's level up a little bit here with this next slide. Look at the top left. A new acronym has appeared. Bum, 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 SWPBIS. What does the SW stand for in this new acronym? Franco, yes, points for Franco for participating in class today. School-wide PBIS. So when we look at positive behavior interventions and supports, then we are looking at um, implementing this system school-wide. Now, PBIS is a system where we are transitioning our mindset as adults from reactively managing whatever students decide to do is their behavior to proactively teaching students which positive behaviors they can place and practice in their lives to be successful. So instead of just as a teacher being like, no, stop that. No, don't talk so loud. We're going to be able to teach them what do you replace that behavior with? If you don't want me doing that, then how do, what do I do instead? What do I do with myself in these different situations? Um, and so that's the beautiful thing about PBIS. You know, we say um, about PBIS, it's often said that, you know, if students don't know how to do math, we teach them. If they don't know how to ride a bike, we teach them. But if they don't know how to behave, hmm, what do we do? We just discipline them or do we teach them how to behave? At a school-wide implementation of this, um, <laughs> yes, April, <laughs> no becomes a word you're going to use a lot. Well, that's the beautiful thing about PBIS is you don't have to use the word no as much, which is really cool. So uh, in a school-wide implementation of PBIS, we are going to need to systematize it. And um, part of that is understanding that PBIS is already a system. It's a type of system called an MTSS. Another acronym, what? Yes, we are in the world of education and we love our acronyms almost as much as the medical world loves their acronyms. So MTSS, what does that thing stand for? 
And uh, why don't any of you all tell me? I'll type the acronym in the uh, in the chat for notes. Oh, I'm not typing in the MTSS. Boop. Break it out. Break it down. Multi-tiered system of support. Oh my goodness, Franco. Um, yeah. Franco, we're supposed to let other people have a chance to share. No, that's great. Thanks, man. Yes, it's beautiful. So it's a multi-tiered system of support. So you see the pyramid here. There are three tiers. Hey, three, three is enough for multi. So it's a multi-tiered system of support. And there are, um, and within each of these tiers, our entire student body can be found. The bottom tier actually contains every single 100% of our students at our school or our district. And what we're doing on the daily as educators is we are providing tier one level support for all of our students. When you implement a standard SWPBIS, then you are going to be implementing, hey, these are what we do to behave in class. These are our school expectations for classroom behavior. These are our school expectations for hallway behavior, for cafeteria, bus, all of those types of things. You, you lay those out and you spell those out for students. And for 85% typically of that student population, that type of support is going to work just fine. But some students, 10 to 15% of our student population are going to need some more support. And that's when we move up to the next tier of support in our multi-tiered system of supports. And in a positive behavior intervention, multi-tiered system of supports, we're going to need to teach these students more focused ways to practice positive behaviors. So these are going to be small group interventions often, and you're going to have a group of maybe 10 or so students. They're going to meet with an adult once, twice a week, maybe every day, depending on how much support they need and how many adults you have available to do this. And then that adult is going to work with them in that small group setting to help them get through academics, to help them understand well, what emotions they're experiencing and what's been happening in their day or their week um, personally and on the school on the school grounds. And then um, the top level of support, this is tier three support, and this is for one to 5% of your student population. They need intensive individualized support. So this would be where you have one adult who move from location to location throughout the student's day with one student and provide them individualized support. And these students are often going to have individualized education plans, another acronym, IEPs. Um, and you're going to need to have support meetings to check in on how um, these students' supports are supporting the student and how and how the student is doing with these intervention supports that you've put into place. Okay, so hey, now we're all up to speed on MTSS, PBIS, SWPBIS. And now we're ready to look at how to make this thing better. So um, in a typical implementation of school-wide PBIS, we need to provide those tier one supports to students. And so we need to, we'll create posters like what you see here with this B and the, the school's mascot are the bees and they be respectful and be responsible and be safe in the classroom, hallway, cafeteria, restroom, community and playground. And it's a lovely, beautiful poster that no one could tell you everything on it because there's a lot of text on it. So how can we, you know, and it's beautiful and amazing that adults have taken the time to think through carefully, okay, these are the exact behaviors that we want to see students doing to be respectful in all the locations on our campus, but it's too many things for kiddos to keep in mind. It's too many things for most of us adults to keep in mind. And so the posters help, but the posters then become one more thing that's just on the wall or in the hallway. And we don't typically tend to like look at it all the time. We may start to forget about them over time. Then we also need to reinforce, if students do practice these behaviors, we need to reinforce the behavior. We need to kind of tell them like, hey, you're doing what we want you to do and thank you for doing that. And here's rewards for that. So we create these externally rewarding systems like what you see in the background here, uh, a school store. 
and students can earn tokens when a teacher when a teacher catches them being respectful or responsible or safe the teacher can say hey i caught you doing something good so here is a paper token or whatever kind of tokens you decided to have at your school and then you can go collect you can collect more of these and turn them in for things at the school store and get rewards that way some schools will you know, the kids use tokens as raffle tickets maybe at lunch for a raffle or they can even like use tokens to build their way into PBIS events and things like that and all of that's great it's all good stuff here are the challenges that we face in those types of systems however Number one, the motivation wanes over time. This is a type of motivation called external or extrinsic motivation. And um, when you are receiving external rewards, when you're doing a behavior to receive external rewards, then you are extrinsically motivated. Now, the problem is that we as human beings, we're not going to be, we're going to be happy about getting one of these pens that you see here at first, but then a pen's not going to be good enough. We're going to get, need to get a marker next time. And now markers are boring. And then we're going to need to get a dinosaur. And then dinosaurs are boring. And now we're like, okay, we're either going to get this football or a backpack or, and now what are we doing at the school level? Now we're like, oh man, we've got to buy like crazier and crazier rewards and keep them stocked at the school store just to keep the kids interested in our system. And if the rewards go away, the behavior goes away. That's really not what we want, right? We really, we're not trying to manipulate students into behaving. And I'm not saying this system is manipulative, but I am saying that when the rewards go away, the behaviors stop happening because there's no more motivation to practice those behaviors because the motivation was an external reward. The other problem that we have is data. So how do we track, you know, okay, a kid turns in five tokens, what teachers gave the kid those tokens? Maybe the teachers sign the tokens when they give them out. Sure, fine. That's a little bit of extra lift on the teacher's side, but maybe they'll be able to do that. But then even then, like when were those tokens given out? Uh, what class periods, what days of the week? Um, when is the student really excelling? Um, and who's to stop a student from like, just you know trading tokens with other students? And what behaviors happened? to earn those tokens. So all of this data is missing. We know that students are turning in more tokens maybe, but we don't know why, we don't know when this, these behaviors are happening. So we don't really know if our students are becoming more respectful, responsible, or safe individually. And if we do know as a whole, because we're seeing more tokens being given out, well, that's great, but we don't necessarily know like how to support individual students. And we talk about those three tiers of support how can we use this system to, to help students who might start to be at risk? Like those students just simply are not earning tokens. So how is the system helping, to, helping us support them? So that's one thing we want to help solve with ClassCraft. The cool thing about ClassCraft, the way this works, is that we're going to take that poster that we see here of how to be respectful, responsible, safe, whatever types of goals you want to implement in your PBIS system. And we're gonna take those specific behaviors that students can practice to show they're being responsible, like completing classwork, or the way that they're being respectful of themselves, the time, the environment, and the learning environment by being positive and hardworking. Specific behaviors, we're going to pop them into a platform that you can interact with on your phone or on your computer. And any adult in the building, administrators, bus drivers, and teachers and support staff can use the platform and give students points for these things. And we can all have the same things in the same like platform called Classcraft to give the students points for those things. Okay, question time. Instead of tokens, students are going to earn points. And we see these purple points, 150 XP, 150 XP. Here's my question. What does XP stand for? And why are we using XP? And anyone can answer it. I have a feeling it's going to be Franco, but anyone can answer it. Experience points. Experience points. Okay, thank you, Franco. Did Classcraft invent experience points? That's just like what we made up for our platform. No, no, we did not. 
where do we get experience points from then? Uh, traditional, oh. <laughs> April. <laughs> yes, April. Let's see Gaming. That Gaming. Gaming. Oh. Don't say that in an education webinar. Don't say gaming. We don't want students on, on their devices any more than they already are. But yes, it does. April, you're correct. Points for April, 150 XP for April and 150 XP for Franco as well. So yes, it does come from the world of gaming. And what this does is it immediately makes these points culturally relevant to the kiddos. They immediately perk up when they can earn XP for doing things at school. These are real life behaviors. What we're doing is we're taking the, the motivating power in gaming and we're bringing it to real life. Students are not playing a video game to get these XP. They're completing classwork. They're being positive and hardworking in class. They're doing whatever you want them to do because you can put in whatever you want to for these behaviors. This is just text that you can type in. And so they're gonna earn these points. Now, the cool thing is that earning points in a points-based reward system is intrinsically motivating instead of extrinsically motivating like our traditional systems. Oh, why is that? Okay, well, because in a points-based system, we're pulling in an intrinsically motivating system that has been worked out already in the world of video games, and we're bringing it into real life. So we're making real life feel like a game by using gaming mechanics that were developed in video games. And the really cool thing is that when you look at motivation, you look at how to create intrinsic motivation, how to get someone to eagerly want to do and practice certain behaviors in their lives, what we find is that we humans all have emotional needs. And if, and we will do behaviors, if those behaviors fulfill our needs, fulfill our emotional needs. And so the top three realms of emotional needs identified by self-determination theory, which is the leading theory around in creating intrinsic motivation are competency, autonomy, and relatedness. Okay. What are those words? Let's break them apart so we can all synchronize on those three needs. So competency, give me some kind of definition for competency in more like layman's terms. Understanding, comprehension. Oh, I like it. I like it. It's good stuff. Points for April. Thank you for participating. Love it. <laughs> What about autonomy? What, what can we say about autonomy? If you had to define that thing for yourself. I have no idea. Single, I don't know. Um, anonymous is what it reminds me of. And I'm not a teacher. <laughs> I'm sure it's a teacher term. <laughs> It's actually not, but it An does sound term. very teachery, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. Like having um, like having your own power to do things. Yeah, oh, you I get you. Yeah. yeah, you have. Gosh, I need I need more less uh, spelling lessons and definition lessons. Woo! April, that's why education right? starting to show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know what I love about this though is that if if I'm using Classcraft, you can use Classcraft like. To, to throw points to kids during your lessons. If we were doing mm -hmm. a lesson right now on these things, April, you'd be getting experience points because mm -hmm. you're getting real life experience. You're being courageous. You're stepping out there. You're giving an answer. You're not sure if it's right or wrong. And that's what's important in a school, not to create an environment of fear to be like, okay, I'm afraid to say anything because I'm afraid of being wrong because I'm going to get a bad grade. But what if we teachers had points that we could give to students that were not about being right or wrong? It was about being motivated. It was about trying. And you tried. So you know what? I would give you 100 XP for being courageous and being participative. I would also give Franco 100 XP for being courageous and being participative because you both were equally participative. <laughs> I don't know if I can say that word anymore, but... but but that's, and that's what I loved about using this as a, as a teacher, because it gave me in my teacher toolkit, something that I can now use to, to reward my kids for trying, 
I literally had, you know how you saw like completing classwork 150 XP on a previous slide. Well, I had in my class, I had trying, failing and trying again, 150 XP. And I love that. So it's, it's just breaking down an environment of fear will definitely create an environment of students who are motivated and feeling empowered to learn because you really, so the only way that I've learned half of anything that I've learned is by messing it up the first time, getting it wrong. The only time I knew about, learned about anything about computers was when something didn't work, you know, and I'm like, oh, I don't know how to fix this. And you got to learn how, right? So now uh, to provide, how can we provide emotional needs for our kids in our classes, which are then going to empower them to be excited and motivated to participate in our PBIS system or in whatever lessons you're doing that day, provide these needs within your lessons. Okay. So help kids understand that they are competency can also be thought of as skill progression and growth. The sense that our life is moving forward, that we're making progress in life. It's going somewhere and things are getting better in a certain way. Right. So Tetris is a great example of that because you can definitely tell the game will speed up if you, if you don't fail the game and it, 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 and you can sense that you're getting better at it because you like you can play longer and the game will get faster the better you get so it it fulfills a need for competency because you can sense when you're getting better at it school does this too school is based around competency like you get a quiz grade it's not so great and then hopefully like the next time you can maybe retake that quiz get a better grade you realize okay i'm getting better at this um autonomy the power to make choices in, in class at school, there's not a lot of that given to students. We have to provide boundaries for them. We, that's important because we have to keep everybody safe um, and we have to help teach kids social norms. But if you can build in some power and freedom of choice and teachers will do this in their lessons all the time, it's differentiation, it's personalization of their learning, like give students a choice. We're going to do a project. You can either write a paper or you can do a presentation or you can make a video. All of that is autonomy. Can we do that in the sense of behavior? Can we do that in the sense of school-wide PBIS? The answer is yes, I'm gonna show you how. And then fulfill the need for relatedness, a sense of belonging, a sense of that you're part of something bigger than yourselves and you're socially connected. And we can do that as well in our PBIS program. And the really cool thing is that we're very equity-minded in, like, in this system as well. So um, in traditional systems, we find that, um, especially in traditional disciplinary systems, you find that there's a, an imbalance in, um, in boys typically are um, disciplined more often and African-American students are disciplined more often. Um, and uh, so we, we found, we found when students are using Classcraft, especially in school-wide PBIS, these equity imbalances disappear. And there's some really cool research around that. For time's sake, I'll have, be happy to help you, you know, give that stuff to you if you reach out to us at a later time. Well, now I want to get you into the platform because what I've got here on this slide, I've got a whole bunch of stuff that you're really, it's supposed to be sticker shock. It's just like, I'm not looking at all that on that slide. That's fine. But what we've done is we put a lot of thought into what pieces of this platform and which kind of components are we going to pull from video games to bring into real life to provide our students with a sense of autonomy, competency, relatedness. In addition to that, there are elements of surprise, there are elements of discovery, there are elements of storytelling, because all of those things are motivating and powerful. And so let me show you how we do that in the platform. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my little demo environment and let's go be a teacher. And I'm gonna be Atticus Finch. That's my demo teacher account. And anybody who maybe is, you know, knows a little bit of literature, maybe you'll get where the reference to Atticus Finch comes from. Um, and so here's my different classes on my teacher homepage. I have a demo class here. I'm gonna hop into this thing. And I want to show you um, a typical environment. So a typical PBIS implementation on a day where my kids are coming into class. Here's, here's my four kiddos. And 
Uh, we come into class and like, welcome to class, everybody. Thanks for being here on time. Let's go ahead and I'm going to go into a list view. And I have my kids on teams with silly names so that we can do team building. We can build in that relatedness. But I'm also just going to take attendance and see Cherie's here, Tilly's here, Clinton's here, maybe Brian is absent. So I'm going to mark Brian absent here. And um, then I'm going to go, Brian, why are you not letting me mark you absent? My absent, Franco, my absent isn't absenting. Franco, fix it. Oh, it did. It did. It marked. It, okay. So they're all, they're all grayed out. Uh, yeah. Last second it worked. It did. Oh, wow. Look at that. Okay. Now it's okay. So it's just my, it's just my internet. It's being slow. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's because I'm screen sharing and zooming and all the other things. Okay. So Brian's absent today. So he's, he's grayed out. And what I love about this is now um, I can give my whole class, I can select all students, but Brian's not going to be selected because everyone else is here on time. And so now I have these different behaviors that we're looking at um, for being respectful, being responsible, being safe. And these are the ways at our school that we're looking for students to practice positive behaviors. These are the positive behaviors that we are actively teaching. We're proactively teaching our kids how to be successful. So every teacher has these behaviors in their class. And we can all be looking for, um, you know, whatever behaviors we want to be looking for, but we can also say, okay, and in, in the announcements today, everybody, remember, remember what the principal, remember what, what, uh, remember what our principal said in the announcements today, everybody, he was talking about it's respect month, remember it's respect month, so we're looking to catch you all being respectful. So the way that I want you all to be respectful today is by showing up on time and being ready for class. And so hold up your notebooks. Who's got a notebook? Hold them up. All right, I see them there, I see them there. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, boom. You're respecting, <laughs> you're being respectful of what we're doing in class. Now you can be more specific. Maybe I, as a teacher, I have these other things I wanna put in my class. So I could literally, I could just type in arriving on time and I've got that here, being prepared and ready to learn. But whatever, however you wanna throw these points out, whatever works for you, it's customizable and you do it the way that it fits your style. For me, being in a class was perfect. I'm gonna give them points for arriving on time. Now my kids are motivated to get to my class on time. And the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna also go ahead and hold up those notebooks, kiddos, hold up those notebooks. Okay, now let's see, Cherie. All right, I see you there, you got it. Okay, Clinton, Clinton's digging in his backpack feverishly. Okay, Tilly, yeah, good job with the note. Oh, Tilly, you already put the date on the next page of the note, that's amazing. Oh, Clinton's got it. Okay, good job, Clinton. All right, now let's all get some points for being prepared and ready to learn. Okay, and now the next thing I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and start the warm up. Maybe I've got a warm up on the screen here. It's a little writing prompt. So I want y'all to go and start that writing prompt. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to play the quiet game. I'm going to give this volume meter a chance to play in, in class crash. So what I'm gonna do is I want three minutes of focused writing time. And this is gonna listen to us in the room with the microphone and the computer kids. And you can't go over that volume or else we're gonna lose some of our points. So let's get started. So we're all gonna earn this 100 XP if we can do some focused writing for three minutes on this prompt. Yeah. Okay, now real life talk here, everybody. As a high school teacher with 30 kids in the room, I did this. And after Edgar, Edgar always had to be like, he always had to test it. He was that kid, right? So he always had to test it and be like, you know, and it pops a little pink thing up there, but doesn't trip the, it has to be the dark purple that trips it. And I'd be like, oh, Edgar. And then, but the cool thing is like other kids be like, Edgar, shh, 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 dude, oh, we're too loud. Okay, keep going or false alarm. Now that was me, kids. That was Mr. Hutch being too loud. I can click false alarm or now y'all gotta be quiet. So let's keep going. The reward is cut in half. It's a real consequence, but there's still a reason to keep going. Second, third, fourth, fifth chances, right? And learn from your mistakes and keep moving forward. And I'm telling y'all, with 30 high school kids in the classroom, I could hear pages turning. 
And I was a science teacher. So it was a very hands-on types of person type of teacher. So it was like often a loud classroom. It was one of those constructive loud things, you know, but it was often a noisy, noisy learning environment. Um, but this was one of those times where I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Pages turning. Okay, let's go ahead and finish that. Now, this is automatically going to give those points to the kids. I don't need to do anything other than click finish and they get those points. And now what I want to do is go over what we just wrote. So I'm going to use my random picker and I'm going to be able to say like, oh, all right, what did you all write? When we're writing there, what'd you write for number one? Let's see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who's it going to be? Pick a rando. It's Tilly. Tilly, what did you put for number one? And then Tilly can tell me what Tilly put. And maybe Tilly put the wrong answer. April style, but that's okay, right? Because I am not grading them. I want them to be participating and practicing positive behaviors in my class. So guess what? Boom, I'm gonna give Tilly points because Tilly didn't give me a goofball answer. Tilly gave me, she gave me an honest, like, this is what I really think, Mr. Hutch. And I'd be like, you know what, Tilly, I'm glad you told me what you really think because now I know I can help you get to the, the correct thing that we wanna think about that, but I really appreciate you giving, being positive and hard work and giving me a shot at that. So here's some points for that. Now let's see if we can get somebody else. Let's go ahead and roll this again. Cherie, what'd you say? And Cherie gives us the right answer, just like Franco style. And then boom, same points, positive and hardworking because she's also being positive and hardworking. And then if I didn't remember to do this every day, my kids would yell at me, Mr. Hutch, who's the helper of the day? Oh, right. Well, now I have an equitable way to just randomly select kids for anything I want to do in class, including my helper of the day. So I'm going to pick a random kid. Clinton, will you be my helper today? I need someone to go ahead and collect all of the papers from the warm up and alphabetize them by last name. Are you willing to do that for me? Yes, Mr. Hutch. Okay, cool. Then I'm going to give you points for being my helper of the day. Boop. And it's just that easy to play and have fun and do your lesson that you want to do every day. You can use or ignore these class tools. There's all kinds of fun stuff in here. There's timers and boss battles, which are review games and the volume meter that I've shown you and random events to bring in a brain break. There's a lot of great stuff in here. But the point that I want you to get is this is very easy to use. It's very fun. And um, the kids absolutely love it. The other thing I want you to get is that the kids don't need to be on a device. If you think of what, what did the look, what did the classroom look like in that example that I just did? Not a single kid was on a device. And had they been on their device, they would have missed out on holding up their notebook to get points for being prepared. And that maybe a kid, maybe Clinton was initially on his phone. And then all of a sudden he looks over and Cherie's like, mm -hmm. and Clinton's like, oh, like now I don't have to yell at Clinton and be like, Clinton, phone away every day we do this. No, I don't have to do that because now Clinton wants to put the phone down and get the ball because they're getting points. Now, uh, what's the point of getting points? Why get points? So Here's what we're doing, folks. We are gamifying education. We're gamifying our PBIS program. And then your teachers in the classroom, like I'm doing here, they can go so far as to use the class tools and things and gamify the entire lesson if they want to. Or they can be real simple uh, and just like the, the principal makes an announcement. Everyone, we're doing responsible stuff this, this uh, month. So just try to give kids points for being responsible one time today. If you can think of, thank, thanks for doing that, everybody, you know, have a great day. So then at the end of the class, maybe this is, I don't use Classcraft for anything other than, okay, at the end of class, everybody that was responsible today, you're all getting Classcraft points. In the last five minutes of class, we wrap up and then we're like, okay, so let's all you know what? Everybody was being really responsible, except for Clinton. Remember, I had to talk to you about getting off that phone there. Tomorrow's a new day. I'm pulling for you, buddy. I'm hoping you get those responsible points tomorrow, but I just don't feel right about giving them out today. So tomorrow's a new day. Let's go for it tomorrow. And so that's just that easy. That's maybe all you have to do for your school-wide PBIS in the classroom. And then if the administrator wants to push out a different behavior to look for next month, then uh, if we just go ahead and click to give points again and see what these school-wide behaviors are, 
with just a few clicks on the admin's Adminers, administrators side, they can push out another behavior to everybody in the classroom. So um, if they want to push out like, okay, it's a school wide issue where they want kids to start arriving on time, then this, this is right now just in my class and me as a teacher, I made this and put this in my class. These school wide with the little gems, these are ones that administrators can push out. So maybe administrators just like, you know what, I'm going to make arriving on time a school-wide one. And this is going to be our push for, especially in the fall, you know, maybe when we're coming back to school time. And that's the first thing that they want all the teachers to look for. Hey, teachers, as you're taking attendance, would you also just throw kids some class craft points? Whoever's there on time, just, uh, you know, click that for us. We really appreciate it. We just want to kind of like, you know, encourage the kids to get to class on time. And then also, like, it gives us some really cool data on how we're doing school-wide. That's the other piece that we get into it. Let me show you why the kids love it. Then I'm going to show you the data piece. And that's all she wrote. So here's why the kiddos love it. This is the fun, pretty stuff. Let's take a look at Tilly's character here. View profile. This is Tilly's character. Tilly loves her character. Her character represents her and her personal growth at school. This is not a character that Tilly needs to get on a device and play through levels like Mario Brothers or something with. This character is a static image that represents like it's customizable. And like I said, it can look cooler and cooler and she can unlock cooler customizations for her character as she continues to practice positive behaviors and earn these points. So here's Tilly's experience points bar. And um, as she's been getting points in class, she's been filling this bar. And if we look right underneath her name, she's a level 21. And that means that she has filled this bar 21 times at school this year. At school this year. And every time she fills that bar, she levels up one more time. And if we click on this level, and she can click on this level, if you give her a chance to log in on her own device, she can see this level track. And, ooh, okay, so there's level 20. When she reached level 20, she unlocked all of these cool new customizations for her character. This new staff, this new headdress, this new green glowy stuff she can hold, this new cape. She could, and it's a shaman set. So she, she, could, um, she could equip all this stuff on her character if she wanted to when she hits level 20. She also gets a crystal and some gold pieces. And then at level 21, she doesn't unlock any new looks, but she unlocks a crystal and some more gold pieces. And then when she gets to the next level, she's not there yet. She's not level 22. She's going to unlock a new look for a character. She can't see it yet. It's kind of the power of surprise and discovery. She's got to get there to see it. Um, and she's going to get another crystal hmm. and some more gold pieces. What the flippity flop is a crystal? Well, if you look really carefully, it'll tell you what it is. And the kids can see this too. Crystals are used to activate special powers, which can grant you privileges in class. What? Privileges in class? Oh my goodness. How does that work? Well, let's go out of the level track here. Let's take a look around here. So here's where we can manage Tilly's points. And we can give her points here and she can fill that experience points bar. Every time she fills that bar, she levels up and she's beginning these crystals. Right now she has three crystals. She can have up to five. She's got two missing spots. And she's also getting those gold pieces. But what are these for? Well, these are all motivational components. And some of them, you know, it's different strokes for different folks. So some kids get really motivated by some of these things and other kids mo get motivated by others. Well, okay, what are these things? Well, let's take a look from the student's perspective. So let's view a student. And now we're looking, this is what it looks like to a student when they log into Classcraft. Whenever you give them device time, or you don't even have to give them device time, and they'll go home and they'll log in and check this out at the end of the day at home and be like, oh, what kind of cool new stuff did I unlock by being awesome at school today? So uh, let's see, they, one thing I love about this is when they click on their experience points bar because they want to earn more points, they can see what they can do in your class to earn more points. So these are the things that I put in my class. And now the kid can see what to do in my class to get more points. And my kids definitely, definitely clicked on this because <laughs> I would have kids who were really close to filling their bar and they get super antsy at that point. They're like just about to level up. And so they're like, 
oh, Mr. Hutch, I just need 50 more points to level up. I just need 50 more points. And so they'll click on this and be like, Mr. Hutch, guess what? Um, uh, I'm keeping my area clean, Mr. Hutch. I'm keeping my area clean. I'm like, yes, you're, you're not spitting on your desk. That's great. Thank you for keeping it clean. But, but I'll tell you what, I'll give you those points at the end of class today. If you, if you do actually go over and grab a Clorox wipe and, and you, wipe off, you wipe off the desks today before you leave class, I will give you those 100 points that you so desperately need. Okay, Mr. Hudge, I'll do it. Like, it was awesome to be able to get kids asking, what can I do <laughs> to get points? Um, so they have visibility on it. They can then go to this power screen and they have these crystals that they can use to activate powers. And they can unlock more powers by leveling up. So all we need to do as teachers is just look for the positive and give the kiddos points for doing good things. Just try to catch kids doing good things. That's all we need to do. But then all the motivational components are built in and kids will figure all this out. And the platform will also teach them how to use it when they first log in. Um, but they'll get in going here. They can click, okay, so I leveled up 21 times and along the way I've unlocked these different powers. I've got this dodge power now. And if I click this, I'll spend a crystal, but I'll be excused from being chosen to answer a question. Ha ha ha, Mr. Hutch. So I'm going to use my dodge power. And then, you know, and this is all facilitating real life relationship. So I, as a teacher now get a notification that Tilly played her dodge power and she wants to be excused from being chosen to answer a question. So now it can be a discussion about how that looks in my class. Uh, it can be like, okay, Tilly, well, in our class, that what that means is the next time that I'm randomly calling out on students with the random picker, if you get picked, I'll just randomly pick someone else. You get, you don't have to answer that one. Or it can be, we're going to do a worksheet and there's going to be 10 questions on it. You can skip one of those 10 questions on there. Just write dodge on that question. And I'll know that that's when, that's what you wanted to use your dodge power on. In addition to that, let's say that you as a teacher, you're like, I hate that power. I would never have that in my class. That would not work for me and my kids. No problem. You have the autonomy as well to edit all of these. You can change them to be whatever you want. I know a lot of teachers do homework passes as class craft powers now, um, or they'll do like choose your seat for the day, or you can work with a buddy on something, whereas normally you would have to work on something individually all of that kind of stuff, whatever you want to put in. We just try to put stuff in here so you don't have to build it from scratch. So that's how the powers work. Some kids get motivated, especially the older kids. You're talking about high schoolers. Even we have even, we have universities that use class craft and yes, even university students get into it because everybody likes a little fun, a little silliness. So, um, but these real life powers are where it's at, especially for the older kids. Then the, the customization. So let's go take a look at what do we have here on the left? Let's, let's click this little arrow and expand it. So we have equipment, pets. Okay, let's take a look at equipment. So, oh, okay, I've earned, a, I've earned 728 gold pieces. That's what GP stands for. These are gold. It's like money in Classcraft. Every time the teacher is giving the student points, experience points for doing a positive behavior, Classcraft also gives the student a little bit of gold pieces along with that. And so you don't have to think about it as a teacher. It's just happening. You're just clicking and giving points. And then the students can go in here and they can say like, okay, like, let me, let me see what other cool stuff I've unlocked by leveling up. So they unlock like different looks for their kids. So then these glasses, oh, there's a little mustache. Um, I like those glasses. Now let me get some different boots. And let's go to, mm, let's get something that I've actually unlocked because they have to level up to see all those higher level ones. Okay, these big boots, I'm gonna get these big boots. I'm gonna spend 280 gold pieces on these big boots. And then this pet is covering up my boots. So Krista's gotta go away. So let's put this snail on here, guy. And that way they can see my boots. So yeah, I like this look. Save changes. Now it's like, and your kids learn little fiscal stuff now. Okay, it's going to cost me 280 gold pieces. I got 728. I'm going to buy it and save those changes. This is, this is my old look. And then, oh, this is my new look with my new boots. These boots are made for walking. And I like walking around school in these boots. So 
the, the younger kids, middle schoolers, elementary kids, they love the customizable character and the new looks that they can do. They especially love it when your teachers are using that random picker in class and their characters popping up on screen and they're like, oh, Mr. Hodge, look, I got some new glasses. And then you can be like, yeah, I love those glasses. How'd you get those? That's cool. It just facilitates some fun conversation with your students. So that's what students like about it. There's some other really cool built-in stuff. So kudos, I gotta show kudos off because this is my favorite feature. This is a thing where a student can, remember we're still viewing as a student right now, students can create positive messages for other students in the class. And um, then this is all teacher approved. So this is a class wall, it's a public space where I can see all of the messages that one student sent to another. This student sent a message to their whole team and they have little team crests that represent the team. This student sent a message to Wilmer and Wilmer's now featured. And the student who receives the kudos receives points automatically from Classcraft as well. So this is a way for your students now to become part of the culture building revolution that will happen when you're using Classcraft in a school-wide PBIS system. Usually it's all the responsibility on the adult shoulders to try to create that culture and climate with features like kudos and teams and powers. Students now have that responsibility, some of it in an appropriate amount at least, to help build and create that culture. And they do, you'd be surprised. I mean, a lot of times we get so, we harp on kids, you know, for being immature and, and a lot of that's just age appropriate and making poor choices, but the kids love to give out kudos. It's really, really cool and really heartwarming. So, um, and that's just one feature. There's all kinds of cool stuff in here that we don't have time for. The other thing I do want to show you is I do want to show you why we adults love it. Okay, so let's go look at it. Now, I've shown you the teacher side and maybe you can kind of connect a little bit with why the teachers love it. Another thing that I loved as a teacher was, especially in a high school, I can put my lesson plans in here and have Classcraft automatically give kids points for doing, their, doing my lessons, doing my tasks. And that's in a feature called Quests. I'll just show you this really quickly. I made my whole course in Quests. So all these little dots is a different week-long lesson plan, but so that we don't, get anxiety from seeing too many things on the screen. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna show like this one here, Compounds Canyon. So I was teaching chemistry. And so like my kiddos would go into Compounds Canyon. This is my full lesson plan. This is a two week lesson plan. Each purple dot on the map is another day, another activity we do on a different day. Um, but my kids don't need to actually be in Classcraft or have a device on them to do these things. This is just holding my lesson plan. And it was showing me which of my kids made it this far into the lesson if I wanted to let them move through it in a self-paced way, which is great for project-based learning because I can easily track like which of my students are at different steps in their project here. But my kids don't see this. This is not fun looking. My kids see the map and they get story and then they see a task to complete. And I could put in fun little like things. I could put in little pictures and stuff. Um, and I could even put in videos that they could watch right here to see how to do our activity. And then they would do this with crystals and stuff on their desk. Like they don't even need to have a computer. This is just where I would hold this like lesson plan. Then if they'd missed school, they could go on here and they could see it just like it was a learning management system. Um, or like what I often did was I would just be like, hey, what's our, what are we, what's our lesson today? And I would just pop this up on the screen, like I'm screen sharing it right now. And um, we would have a fun little story bit going on, like just to build in some power of narrative and discovery and have a little fun with it. And then they would have their learning tasks to complete. Um, so there's all kinds of fun ways that you, your teachers can get a lot or a little out of the platform, but what do administrators get? And what do we love about Classcraft? Well, all of us adults get analytics. So this is still in a teacher account. We all get to see how our students are earning these points. Remember we talked about the token system and it was like, yeah, you earned five tokens, you turn them in at the school store, 
to get a dinosaur, but we don't know where, when, what you did to earn those five tokens. You might have traded your friend uh, your banana at lunch to get that fifth one and not actually have gotten it from a teacher. Your friend had it from their teacher and they gave it to you. So, but this is going to solve all those problems. This is going to show us like within this date range on this map, on this graph, we can see um, each student, Cherie, has shown self-control two times, has the make is valley is that volume meter that I did. So that's where she got the points for that. Number two, metals elements is one of my quest tasks. So she got points for completing a learning activity in my class. And then she's been positive and hardworking two times and she's arrived on time one time. And I can do this for all, I can see this for all of my kiddos. And um, then also, this is for you, Franco. I can do a list view of it as well. Um, and so then the list view is really, really clean. I like it. It's really nice because I can easily see, okay, Tilly, Tilly has been paused and hardworking. I can see the dates and times these have happened. And if you notice like, okay, there's kind of a trend here. Okay, Tilly has been earning points at 6 p.m. or at 10 a.m., but really no other times. So either her teachers that she has at those times are the ones giving out points, or that's when Tilly is practicing positive behaviors. In addition to that, we can also track negative behaviors in the platform. If a student is making poor choices, then you can click the negative and you can have school-wide reasons that students need a course correct. So choosing to act impulsively is a very age appropriate thing that happens in middle school. And maybe Clinton is choosing to act impulsively. Clinton always forgets to raise his hand. Clinton, you forgot to raise your hand. So you're going to lose one health from your character for acting impulsively. What does that look like on the profile? Clinton did not lose a level. Clinton did not lose a crystal. He still has all his crystals. Clinton lost a little heart. So the health is here to, uh, it's a game mechanic to track negative behavior, but because it's done in a game lens, the kid doesn't feel like you hate them when you have to remove a heart. The kids don't think video games hate them when they lose a life in the video game. Kids understand that games are played with rules. This is play with rules. Real life school has rules and expectations and we're playing the game of life. And uh oh, I'm sorry, but uh, you know, that's one of the rules. So that's the consequence for the rule. You lost the health. It's okay. I still love you the same. You're not kicked out of class or anything. That's just the rules. So um, we can keep track of those negative behaviors as well, because that is an important piece to supporting students. You know, if a student is showing that they're struggling because they're starting to lose a lot of health, let's just take a look at Brian and let's take a look at his health stuff here. So let's filter by health. Okay, so Brian lost a health because he's being off task um, earlier today. And so now like school counselors have visibility on this, administrators have visibility on this, the deans have visibility on this, other teachers have visibility on this, and we can build relationship with Brian and support Brian. Be like, okay, what, what, what happened? What were we being off task? What was going on? Oh, you know, what about? Parents can also have visibility on this as well. Thank you, April. Um, so um, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Talk to Wait, me. I have a question. Yes, we only it's 4 30. We almost need to wrap up. But anyways, I have a question on the uh point system. Like, so is there a yes. way to set it up to where if Brian dips below a certain level that I'm notified? Like I noticed that you went hunting for Byron or whatever. Um, but but I want to know if I get notified because I have a very busy life and and there's 300 kids in my classroom, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, school, whatever. Is, yes. is that possible? It is possible and it happens oh, awesome. automatically. So you have an activity center in your in your um like you can live in your classes, but you can also go to your activity center just to see what's been going on. And um, there are two categories. There's to do's and notifications. Notifications just let you know things that have happened that you don't really need to do anything with, but you might be interested to know. So I can filter this by students completing activities in my those quests that I showed you, students turning in assignments in those quests, students leveling up, students playing powers. This was super helpful as a teacher because how am I gonna know that Tilly used that dodge power? 
unless Tilly tells me, or I can see it right here. And she did it 13 minutes ago. But what I can also do is I can also see when students have taken damage and it's called delayed damage in here. So I can see that, okay, here's Brian and Brian chose to act impulsively eight hours ago. I don't have to go hunting through my classes or clicking through anything to find that. I've got a notification right here to let me know that that happened. And I can click on it and it'll take me into this screen but to have a conversation with Brian about it. Like if he takes too many, like this is actually a situation that's kind of cool it came up, but if they lose all their hearts, then their character is going to fall or their teammates can have powers that will that will help them. This is another thing where they can be connected. So Clinton actually has a restoration power that Clinton could use to help Brian right now with this health loss, or we can let Brian fall. Now let's go ahead and let him fall. And what happens is students get a randomly selected pledge to process um, how they can do better next time. They're not kicked out, their character's not dead, none of that, they'll immediately have one heart back and their teammates can actually help them build those hearts back too, it was pretty cool. But they get one random, so what Brian get? Brian got to draw a comic strip showing how you could have made better decisions. And these are meant to be things that are like age appropriate for kids as redemptive actions. It's a process, like you're not a bad person, how are you gonna do better next time? And then let Brian accept his fate and um that's that's how all that works a lot okay. of schools, yeah go ahead what about if there are what about patterns uh how do you know seeing seeing behavior patterns positive or negative and then either prepping the next grade or teachers if it's a school-wide whatever initiative um you know how how would how does that look you know yes so on the teacher side the admins actually have much more robust because I don't, but I'm just staying here because we can still see it on the teacher side too. Um, sure. But what you can do is you can see, it's pretty easy to see patterns. For me, I like to see the overview because right. I can see on a graph. For me, I love to see the graph and see like, okay, you know, this has been happening. Like they've been getting better over here. Um, in the light purple, you can see this is like the class um, average of points. So on the 31st of March, on mm -hmm. average, like everyone in the class earned 87 points that day. And yet our student here didn't earn any on that day. So mm -hmm. you could ask them like, what's going on? They might've just been absent, but they might've had a bad day. But then you can also see the patterns in that list view where you get these times and dates and you can see like, okay, Brian has been losing health. Like he lost health twice on this day and, and not never on any other day what happened that day or it's always happening right after lunch like that the, the mm -hmm. time that we see on there it's like always the happening or something yeah right like what what's going on at lunch brian you know or or maybe it's a, a, a the way they're behaving in a certain class and it's always so it's always happening in that class um so yeah it's really easy to to support your students when you have this real-time data coming in and you can see it on a per student basis and admins can see it on a per school basis as well you can see the individual kid but you can also see if your whole school collectively if they're all getting points for being more respectful responsible or safe you can have school goals that are tied to specific behaviors and see if your kids are improving that way, which is really awesome to be able to talk about school improvement plans, to be able to show data of your school, um, and to be able to justify, you know, using a platform like this if you have to do so. I know we're at time. I would be, I'm happy to show you that admin side, but I'm also happy to let you go too, because we're over well. I can, I can make somebody host. I'm probably going to have to leave though, because I have to pick up my son from daycare. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No problem. It's fine. We have, um, and we have all kinds of resources that we can send out if you want to get some more information. Okay. Um, and, uh, and Nancy, are you, do you have any questions? Does this last the year? Okay. Yes, Nancy. There's uh, some pretty cool stuff that that uh, I didn't show you, but there are we have built in 
ways for your teachers to ease into the platform. I was showing you all the bells and whistles right up front. So you knew what was in there, but that's a lot for some teachers when they're first getting acclimated to this idea. And we understand that. And so when a teacher first begins, the platform is very simple. It just allows them to be able to give out points in class. And then when a teacher's ready, they can unlock more things into their class. They can add some more of those little class tools and things like that I was showing you into their class when they're ready. And there's built in little two minute videos that let the teacher learn what they're about to add to their class so they don't feel like any anxiety about adding something in they're not comfortable with. So the platform teaches them throughout the year. Now, the cool thing about a teacher adding another feature in maybe a month or two into the school year is it breathes new life into the student's motivation with the platform as well. Because at first, the students don't even have characters. The teacher's just giving out points and we're able to track that behavior data in student accounts. But whenever the teacher's ready, the teacher can invite the students to create their character and customize the face and then the characters can get cooler and cooler looks as the teacher adds that in throughout the year. So it does, it does kind of flesh out throughout the year at the teacher's pace. Great, thanks, Nancy. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is if you have any other questions, Send an email to this email right here. Yes. <laughs> right there you are. <laughs> Franco will get right to you. You can reach out to reach out to Franco. You can reach out to me too. I don't mind at all. I'm hutch at classcraft.com. But Franco does the numbers. Franco's the person that people really want to talk to because Franco's the one that is going to be able to get you connected with getting set up and getting the ball rolling. He can do demos for you and your leadership team if they want to see what this thing looks like. And he doesn't talk as much as I do. So it's much better. Like he'll get you that demo done in 10 minutes. And I would keep you there an hour and a half. So you want to talk to Frank. <laughs> and we can do a fun little interactive demo. You could ask me questions and we can go back and forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you guys. I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. All right. Perfect. Such a